Hello and welcome to Join News Prime. In our headlines, opposition NDC dismisses calls for its May 13 primaries to be postponed over fears the voters' register is not credible. Also, TUC's demand to reinstate some staff of Sunon Asogli Power Company who were allegedly dismissed for attempting to unionize. And uh, we also question why would a child be so affected and move to tears because of lack of furniture in school. Sir, it's very pathetic. The educational minister should try his possible means and talk to Akufuado to solve this problem. My name is Samuel Kojo Brazer. The opposition NDC has dismissed calls for its May 13 primaries to be postponed over fears the voters' register is not credible. Flag bearer hopeful Dr. Kwabna Dufour says the register made available by the party is fraught with several discrepancies. His campaign team has therefore written to the party as that uh, it gets all parties to agree on a roadmap towards securing a credible register. Let's get deep into the issues being raised by the Dufour camp. I'm joined in studio by head of political desk here at Joy News, Evans Mensa. Evans, what are the issues that the Dufour camp uh, is bringing up? So it all revolves around the register. Now, First of all, the complaint was that the register, the full complement of the register, have not been given to them, uh, uh, contrary to regulation. So they needed it in time uh, ahead of the uh, the primary, so they can study it. If they have issues with it, they come and then they resolve it. So that was the first one. And then the second is that when the register was finally given to them, a partial register, which wasn't complete, they went through it and then they realized that there were significant flaws mm. in that register, all according to uh, Dr. Dufour's team. Mm -hmm. And some of the things they found were, you know, so it will be you, your face mm -hmm. on, in, the, in, the, in the album, and then you'll find that your name appears, say, in uh, constituency A in Greater Accra, and then your, your name is found again in constituency A in Ashanti region, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They also, um, women with male names, okay. you know, so there were issues that they discovered and they, they did screenshots of this and had shared it quite widely. And then there's a third issue, which is that the party hasn't been that open in explaining to them and getting to resolve the challenges that they've been, they've been coming forth with. That has broadly been the challenges that they've identified. And mm -hmm. for, as far as they're concerned, the register for the elections is incredible. Okay, okay. How widespread, if you look at the data they've put out, is this particular anomaly? I mean, they put figures to it. They talk about the fact that about more than 40% of the register that they've been given is inaccurate. Mm. That is substantial, mm. if that is the case. Yeah. Now, we are learning a bit more about what the party has been doing about this. So apparently, um, on the 4th of May, there was a meeting on this where the the, the team, the Commander Force camp, presented their findings to the party's election committee. And the party's election committee, um, they claim, admitted that yes, we have challenges that need to be resolved. Mm -hmm. Now, at that meeting, they, re they asked for the remainder of the register to be given to them so they can, again, go through that and, and check if that too had issues. Mm -hmm. They were giving, and then yesterday, there was another meeting at this meeting, they, they claimed they were, they were told to come to this meeting and they will be given the last compliment. That's about 47 of the key areas that were outstanding. Mm -hmm. They claimed that when they went to this meeting, when then they presented a bit more of their findings, which shows the, how incredible the register is, mm -hmm. um, Kukubo, who is the... Um, is he speaks for the, the Dufour team. The Dufour team mm -hmm. says that that meeting was chaired by the former sports minister, Elvis Free Ankara. And Elvis's um, verdict was that because of the extent of the challenges they are talking about, they would rather sit down and try and resolve all the challenges. They wouldn't give them the 47 outstanding. Okay. They will now review the 47 outstanding together with the entire document. So they want to review the entire document now. Before the giving it to them so that they would sort of deal with the challenges before mm -hmm. handing that register over to them. And so they didn't get the 47. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the, the, the issue, though, is, uh, and this is according to the general secretary of the party, and Kukubo agrees that this is what actually happened, immediately after that meeting is when they went public with their consents, okay. asking for the postponement mm, of mm, the, 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 primary. the primary this mm. particular Saturday. Mm. So that definitely has created a certain bad faith, right, between the camp of Dr. Dufour and, and the executives the mm. of, the N, of the NDC. Mm. And the, the party is clear that they believe that Dr. Dufour's team have been malicious in the way they've approached this because they put out you know, these claims yesterday mm -hmm. shortly after a meeting designed to try and solve it. Right? So that's where we stand tonight with, mm. with Dr. Dufour and the NDC. So as we speak, there's no intention of calling the, the primary off? No, the party is very clear that that won't happen, um, that it won't be called off. However, Dr. Kamal Dufour's team say, well, if that's the case, then we are exploring our legal options. Mm, interesting. Grateful to you. So this, uh, could, this could well end in court. Mm. And, and we may, may not have a primary day Saturday, but let's see. Okay. All right. Grateful to you. Evans Mizai is uh, head of our political desk here. I join you now. Deputy General Secretary Mustafa Gbande says the party stands ready to address concerns, but postponing the election, as Evans Mizai said, is not under consideration. He joins us on Zoom now. Uh, grateful to you for joining us. Now, we understand the party is uh, still standing by the date. What, what have you been doing about the issues raised by the Dufour team? Mr. if you can unmute for us so that we can hear what you're telling us. Okay. okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, Mustafa. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Right, so thank you for having me. I, I think that since morning we've been discussing this issue mm. and I have stated on your platform mm. that the National Executive Committee is in the position to hear every candidate out on their grievances. But when a candidate is raising issues that are mischievous and malicious, uh, um, the, the, the National Executive Committee will stick to the rules and the guidelines of the election. I must state on record again that each of these candidates were given a delegates list about a month ago based on which they've been campaigning. Now, the album which they are, they, are, they, are, they are talking about now is a supplementary document to make the election further credible and transparent. Okay. Now, they've been given substantial number of the, 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 the delegates list, the album, totaling about 240 or 30 constituencies. The remaining is supposed to be finished by today or tomorrow. But let no one tell you that because the albums are coming in this close, it means that they have not had enough um, information that will guide them on the election. Mm. That is not correct because they mm. already know their delegates. They have the original delegates list on which they have been campaigning. Okay. Now, on the issue of listening to them, these campaign team have, teams have always met with our technical committee on elections. And as, early, as, 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 as of yesterday, Dr. Dufour's campaign team were in a meeting with the elections committee to address some of these issues in which they were assured that by the close of the day, the committee will work on all the documents and try and give them a complete album. Has, has, has that been oh, done since you, you assured them that they will get it today? It will be done. They are meeting this night. And I, 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 I think that if mm. the committee is done with their work, you quite agree that issues of correcting data and mm. all of that are a bit technical. Mm. And that okay. is not everybody that can go into the mm. data. They are protected data mm. and that the technical team will correct the same. Okay. And so the issues they are raising are not fundamental enough to flaw the entire process of the election. But, 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 now, but, 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 Bande, uh, in the face of all the facts they've put out there, how can you then assure the parties involved of a free and fair election on Saturday? I, I can assure you that, like I said, uh, an uncompleted album cannot be used for election, and we all agree that, to that. Mm. 
we would ensure that they have a completed album devoid of all the technical challenges. Thank God they have raised. And I believe that it is their right to be heard and leadership would give them audience. Okay. That is why they are meeting tonight to address these issues. Beyond that, um, when you had written a letter uh, subsequent on a meeting which you have attended and all your concerns were raised and assurances were given, you wrote a letter and less than 12 hours, you have headed to court. It means that there is a fundamental conception mm. of malice. Okay. All right. Other than that, you will not request for technical information. And when that information is going to be provided, you run to court. Okay. Uh, Gr Gr grateful to you, Bande, for, for joining us here. But, but I must also say that... Uh, trying to hold a party to mm. ransom. Okay. For me, I think... It's not I must also say that we've been joined on the line by Kofi Kukubo, who is with the Dr. Dufort team, and he joins us via Zoom. Now, grateful for joining us. Now, since you brought out those anomalies, um, what has been the party's response to you? We've heard from them, but can you confirm what they've just told us? Um, can you unmute so we can follow exactly what you're telling us? Sir? I say we have never received any information. We have never received any response. From the past. We, we, we've been told by the Deputy General Secretary that your team has even been called into a meeting tonight to try and resolve the outstanding issues. Is that not the case? As I sit here, I have never, I have not received any information. Okay. So what will the do for come do if nothing is done about your concerns and the elections are indeed held Everybody. this weekend? I've never received any. Yeah, I understand you say you've not received any information, but I'm asking that what will happen if nothing is done about your concerns and the primaries uh, are indeed held over this weekend? Well, you know, elections are not just any social activity. Elections are held within the framework of law. Mm. So all the issues that we are raising are within the framework of law that governs elections in this country, mm -hmm. whether national or internal. So that is a fundamental thing we are pursuing. So all the things we are doing are grounded in law. So therefore, if the party refused to at least call us for a roundtable discussion so that we can discuss the issue, not only Dr. Cobran, the first team, there are other st stakeholders because there must be uh, 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 accorded that respect mm -hmm. to be called to a round table discussion to resolve the issues mutually because this is a win-win uh, 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 case, a win for the party, mm -hmm. a win for the voters, the grassroots so that they can be given a credible register to mm -hmm. enable them elect the person that they want to represent them. Okay. So the current situation of the, of, of the register would deprive them of that fundamental right where the eligible people, by, by no fault of theirs, will be removed from the, from the voter register. And that those who are not rather qualified will be placed in the, in the, in the, in the voter register. Mm. That is where we have said no. The current situation of the voter register, until it is addressed, it is just appropriate and right that we do not conduct any election that will uh, inherit a dispute, chaos, and other things that would not be healthy for the party. So if, if the issues are not resolved and the election is held, will you participate or not? To, to any meeting. If the issues are not resolved, we shall pursue it exploring all legal avenues mm. to make sure that the voter register is credible to guarantee free and fair elections. All right. Um, I'm grateful to you uh, for joining us. He speaks for the Dufour camp. But still staying with the NDC primaries, we understand some constituencies will not be having their primaries scheduled for um, this Saturday. One of such is the Menshia South constituency. And my colleague Nana Yaojima is joining us live from that constituency with more. Nana, uh, who are you with and what do they make of uh, the development coming up? <laughs> So at the moment, I'm here at the Mansha South constituency with some of the delegates who are being exempted.
from the election which will be held on Saturday. Now, the issues within the constituencies is that according to party executives within the region, the voter register here at the Mensha constituency has issues. And the issue is that according to these party executives, there are some ghost names within their register. And for that matter, um, they cannot allow them to use the register to vote. So they've been exempted from the election. Now, I have with me some of the executives who are not happy about what is the development that 462 of them will not be allowed to vote. They believe that they also deserve to be given an opportunity to participate in the upcoming election, which will be held on Saturday. So, Mr. Apia, this morning, Mr. Apia um, is the one who addressed the press on the issues and will be getting more information from him. Mr. Apia, um, good evening and welcome to Joy News. Um, today, you, 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 you were at the press conference, you spoke to us. What are your issues? Why should you be allowed to vote, even though the party is saying that the voter register for the um, constituency has a number of ghost names and therefore um, it shouldn't be allowed to stand? Yes, uh, the, main, the, the reason is that uh, uh, per our data, our data uh, we qualified. We picked forms, we paid for it, uh, we were vetted, and we were, we were made to pass through the vetting process. We passed. So I don't think that there's any, any issue that uh, bars us from not voting. Now, what they are saying is that there are some ghost names in this register. And I know that some of you are aware of these ghost names, especially during the constituency elections. Um, th there were issues raised by a number of people at a point, and we had. And some um, some people within the constituency taking this matter to court. Um, it, obviously, it means that if there are these ghost names there, it, it, the, the register is fraudulent. I, I, I think that if you have issues with that data, then it means that you have to present your evidence relative to uh, uh, the matter under discussion. But th there's nothing like that. If you think that somebody's name has appeared on our data or our delegate list, and you think that that person is not qualified to vote for that constituency election that culminates in electing uh, the uh, constituency executive, then it means that if you have genuine concern, it means we will back you. But once you are unable to present any evidence relative to it, then it means that we can't allow that. But Saiki, do you believe that some auditing should be done about this voter register? Uh, th 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 that's the concerns that the party executives are raising. No, if that is, it, it is so, then we have to do the auditing. No, you cannot just say that we shouldn't vote on the 13th. At the same time, knowing that I know that the voter register is an authentic one. Those people, 462, are qualified people and they have the right to vote on the 13th. So if there is any issues on the voter register, why don't you audit it? and allow the people to vote, rather than, I mean, causing all this, this mess in the constituencies. It, it doesn't make any uh, sense. Yeah. So if there is issues, then let's confront the issue. But none of the, even the regional and the, what do you call, the national executive, call the constituency to confirm what's the problem. We just saw that they have issued, uh, what do you call it, a letter from the fact that we shouldn't participate in the election. And you cannot understand all this. So, this morning, you, in the press um, st uh, statement that you brought out, you are saying that you are willing to go the legal way yeah. if your concerns are not ra addressed in 48 hours. Now, some of the time has elapsed. Are you preparing? Are you still in preparation to go to court? Yeah, the, uh, I think the, the branch executives, uh, which is the branch executives and the ward coordinators, they decided that they are going to, I mean, fight for their own because uh, they have asked, I mean, they have been asking the constituency executive and the regional executive what is going on. And there is no any answer. They don't know what the, uh, what the problem is. So they decide to take it on. So after the press conference, if nothing good comes out, then they'll go to court. What, what will you be seeking in court? I think the, at the moment, because of the time factor, the best, I mean, solution is to have injunction of the whole issue so that and halt the election yes of course and then the, the the executives will call them and then they discuss the issue and know the issue and solve the problem then the election is gone so 
So it, it means that if you do not hear from the party executives in the next 48 hours, you, you, you make sure that you injunct the election in the region. Yeah, yeah, yes, please, we will do that. We, and, we don't, we don't. Deny, and deny the NDC of getting a flag bearer. Yeah, we, we are not denying NDC the flag bearer. We, are, we, we, we want to champion our right to vote, to elect our flag bearer, to elect our parliamentary candidate. And those 462 have that legitimate right to vote and to elect, to present our flag bearer to the nation. That is all. All right, thank you very much. Mami, Bermeni Komokaka. Um, also, your party, but oh, yeah, um, delegate. Ah, I was also talking about our uh, Mencia South constituency. About no man to be a dinner, Baba. Hey, Abana, by higher power, he said, A brow party, no papa papa. He said, Bray, a brand, we are young home fast, why, yes, so you want to it. He said, Mammy, a woman, eh, woman, woman organizer, what woman organizer? That's a memo, my family forms, a chiesica. Aye, you say me person me two delegates, but now some Muslim people are there. Me so no, I know they are me born to me. If you say say say, Omo maye, Omo biye kwa me ya tu abana. So Omo biye kwa na me ya suya tu abana ya suya hun tu yeda. Ma ma me osha em sa ni pa four hundred and sixty two no. Se nyami adu ma me minda ma tu abani biya. Ebe ebe ha abatu ano. Ebe ha abatu ano pa abibri. Adintia. Ebe ha pa vi say yehi adu ma ma no akunya no so. Enti no say ya nyia ono no diye na say anko tu abani biya mane di ebe ha e pa. So she is a women's organizer in one of the wards within the Mensha South constituency. What she is saying is that there is need for them as executives to also participate in the election and vote for their candidate. So if the party does not allow them, it means that the party has disenfranchised them and it will be a worry to most of them. Sir, um also also what nimno um wo dibia wo missing. Mina me a fear could be what could meet her. I will hand missing. If now, now, if four hundred and sixty-two, no, na more than two, I better not have party, no. Oh, I better have party, no. Just say, say, it's not a court. Two hundred and sixty-two, a court. But say, I find you no be copaya. Now, see, if you know, na, enke, area, a team, one. Now, see, yeah, yeah, Antoine, be enke, yeah, yeah, to enke, be team. Now, see, Antoine, say, I ban a pay. Now, see, it's not a court. Two hundred and sixty-two, enke, to yeah, enke, Antoine, two hundred and sixty-two, enti, Antoine, yeah, be hiring because since we are right, I be team, they are actually, ni pay, person will be be there in twenty twenty-four. Emu ya kujipa wano. Ya mayanchere. Inti ya nya. Ebe haing. Ebe haing. All right. So he is also a coordinator at the Fiyako Bi Yenkwa Kwa 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 K
and slamming on the bare, dirty floor in the name of education is common in many rural communities across the country. The pupils improvise by squatting, lying on their bellies or assuming weird positions on the floor just to get an education. The Bakpaba Primary School in the Nanumba North District of the Northern Region is one of the schools with a furniture problem. About six classes sit on the bare floor to study. For many years, the nursery, kindergarten, all the way to primary five do not have furniture. The problem is bigger in the Northern Region. About 213,252 children are without furniture, and that is according to the Africa Education Watch. Children show up to school in clean uniforms but get dirty in less than 30 minutes upon arrival. Odanjo Gifty is a primary five pupil. To get access to a desk, she comes to school very early in the morning. The furniture situation here is based on a first-come, first-served basis. But she is not happy losing hours of sleep because of furniture. Gifty found a way to avoid lying on the floor to write. But she's not happy that her colleagues lie on their bellies to write. At this point, tears cloud her eyes and shortly after, all emotions she had bottled up finally let loose. Ali me baka sala kana ma akpa uniform ma uniform baka kunga nka kata nka taka o ta ya do to kwa kwa mo ko tsa ni na ali te la gbe ko go o ta gba te she had endured enough of the humiliation her teacher Janet Tijotap who served as my translator could not believe that the children are so affected by the furniture situation she also shed tears but during the rainy season Whenever it rains, it links from the app there. So they have to run into a small room over there. So she coming to school to see her colleagues lying down. When she look at it, she feels sad. So and that was what made her cry. I feel bad. These tears are because of the pain of inequalities they had suffered for years. For years, teachers have not explored how children feel about sitting, lying and squatting on the bare dirty floor to study. Many, including teachers, assume that the children are used to slamming it hard on the floor. But times have changed. The children are demanding equality. Sir, it's very pathetic. The educational minister should try his possible means and talk to Akufuado to solve this problem. Because, I'd, like I said, she has been seeing her colleagues on TV, how they dress, how their classrooms look, but theirs is different. It's not even quarter to the others. In 2021, data from the Ministry of Education indicates that about 956,000 kg pupils, representing half of the national kg population, and 1.28 million pupils in primary schools lack desk in schools. Community members of Bakwaba say they have been supporting their children the best way they can. An NGO in education, School for Life, brought them together to ponder over the affairs of the school, to implement a project called Citizen-Led Educational Accountability Responsiveness, which aims at getting the community to hold the government accountable, parents and some community members divided themselves into two groups, debating ways of supporting the school and also ways of holding the government accountable. Look at it. Look at the class. I made one. Classes empty. Classes empty. Classes Classes empty. So how does a, a, a teacher divide him or herself to teach two classes? It can happen. So it's in your mouth. But back in the classroom, a teacher, Mohamed Andratu, 
is having a hard time teaching her pupils how to write the number four. The children have no exercise books or pencils, so they are called to write on the chalkboard. Andreatu says it is indeed exhausting teaching children without basic learning materials. It's no easy. Our major talent is just furniture. Some of them are lying down. The time you realize, some of them will be sleeping. Sometimes you'll be teaching. you see other people, other students playing football outside because there are no furniture in the class. So the space is just like that. So we find it difficult to control them. Sometimes they will play. When they are playing, you can't control them. And others, they will be mingling around. Lack of furniture, that is possible. And again, as a classroom teacher, you are supposed to have your table and chair. But here, not even chair, not talk of table. You can't sit. If you are tired, you can't sit. You can't mark the register. Where to put the register and mark? Sometimes I have to put it on top of the name, mention their names, mark the register. At a nearby school, Jonah Yeli DA Primary School, the headmaster is not happy with the state of the school. Inadequate classrooms, inadequate teachers, the list is endless. The lack of furniture has kept many children at home. They prefer going to the farms or staying at home. Pupils in primary two are trying to identify the alphabet. But it is a disaster. A, mm -hmm. B, mm -hmm. This is the effect of not having enough teachers. The director of School for Life, Widat Saibu, is not happy with the situation. It makes me sad, very sad, because when I go to the communities and look at children, really struggling to just acquire basic education. In the northern region, most pupils have only 35% of the trained teachers they need. About 30% do not have schools nearby. A lot of injustice because a child born to a household that is poor means that her, his or her fate is sealed and government, I mean the, the, the essence of government is to ensure that these children regardless of where you are born you have the basic services or you have access to basic services required to acquire decent education. There are about 2.3 million children in Ghana's public basic schools who lack furniture. The Ministry of Education in February promised to send 40,000 desks to schools without desk. Although the figure is just a drop in the ocean, considering the number of children without furniture, joint news checks also show that not all the desks have been sent to the communities that needed them. Children should not be crying because of a lack of furniture, so government should make it a priority to provide basic furniture to all schools lacking them. Jojo Kobna, Northern Region, Joy News. And I do hope that government is watching this and will try all it can to eradicate this. Now, while the government is doing all it can to do it and to reduce school under trees, thousands of junior high school JHS3 students of Pong, Katamanso Municipal Assembly, cluster of schools at Zenu, have deserted their classrooms to study under trees. This is due to the fear of a possible collapse of their weak classroom blocks, which was built and handed over less than seven years ago. Their counterpart in JHS 1 and 2 have also been asked by the school authorities to go home. My colleague, Carlos Caloni, visited the school and came through with the following report. Built and handed over in 2016, these classroom blocks, which serve over 6,000 pupils, can best be described as a disaster in waiting. Apart from its leaking rules, one could feel vibrations all over with deep structural defects coupled with shattered louver glasses. 
Student ESA, they have been compelled to vacate the classroom blocks due to the fear of a possible collapse of the fragile structure on them. According to them, they are unable to concentrate in class whenever it rained due to fear and the leakages in the roof which leads to destruction of their learning materials. My ability to study is not going on well because as we know now, the building is vibrating and there is no way we can move there to lay. And as we are under the tree now, there are some insects and certain things on the tree that are, I mean, falling on us. And so we don't have the access to even concentrate on what the exams are writing. We don't concentrate on it. I quite remember we were in the class and then um, the number two um, teachers actually came out that we should come out of the class because the building was shaking. We all got afraid and then came out of the classroom. Because of that one, um, our form ones and then form twos are not in school. We are, we are the only people in the school. And the building too is just there. No one is in the classroom. The roof is next. So this destroy our books. When we are writing the exams and it's raining, sometimes we have to stop the papers. Joy News caught up with some parents who say the government must, as a matter of agency, come to the aid of the school. My children are in the Zeno KKD and the building is shaking. So we are afraid of our children's life. So right now, as I'm speaking, our children are in the house. The form one, form two are in the house. It is only form three who are writing the mock. That is basically the reason why they are in the school. They are sitting outside the school. When it is when it's in the afternoon, the sun will just be scorching on them and they will just be sitting here. So we are pleading to the government that they should come to the children's aid. The building is shaking. And the one thing is, the one, the form one and form two, they have gone home already. The over 140 teachers who run the school are equally being affected as they have also deserted their staff common rooms to pitch camp on the corridors. Speaking to Joy News, the Pong Katamanso Municipal Director of Education, Harry Evans Arthur, says the decision to vacate the facility was an interim measure to avert any disaster and to also get the weak structure fully fortified. We have four schools that currently use that one story building facility, Zenu 2, 4, 5, and 6 GHS. But quite recently, they have been experiencing vibration on their facility. They had to conduct a structural integrity test. Just about a week ago, we realized that the vibration still persists. So that informed us to take a decision as to how to find remedy to that. We had to put in some measures to ensure that we still have the school running whilst taking time to uh, fortify or reinforce the facility. A classroom that under normal circumstances should have taken 40 or 50, you go and there are 80 and some even 100 in one classroom. It's a challenge and I want to use this opportunity to appeal to individuals or groups of individuals, corporate bodies and institutions to come to our aid. From the KKMA cluster of schools here in the Konkatamanso municipality, my name is Carlos Galoni for Joy News. Now, a construction worker is in critical condition at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, while six others have also sustained injuries when a church building collapsed on them at Botiano in the Gansouth South Municipality of the Greater Accra Region. The World in Action Church, with a capacity of over 1,000, collapsed on seven construction workers while working. In an interview with Doom News, Gideon FO reviewed the window glasses broke first, and minutes later, the whole building collapsed. Wager Municipal Fire Service Commander Divisional Officer Grade 11, Isaac Saar, said seven people were trapped in the building, but they have been able to rescue all of them. Deputy Nadmo, Director in Charge of Operations, um, has also been brief briefing uh, the, the media as to what they are doing to ensure that everything has been brought under control. So what you see on the screen now is the uh, collapsed structure there. And it, it, it tells of how devastating the whole thing uh, was. We understand that um, one is, is in a very critical condition at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. This, was, uh, this happened when the workers were working on this church building, which is able to contain over 1,000 people. Uh, with all this situation happened uh, just uh, uh, around in the Greater Accra region. We'll take a quick break here. We'll bring you showbiz afterwards.
Welcome back from the now. Before we bring you showbiz, the 1987-88 West Africa Senior Secondary um, that's WASIA groups in collaboration with the Volta Community Development, a U.S. registered non-profit corporation, have donated 20 desktops and four laptop computers to the school to open up the school's first computer laboratory for students. The groups have also paid for the wiring of the lab and installation of the computers in the lab. The computer lab will, among other things, make it possible for over 3,000 students to carry out their coursework, research, and learn digitally. Noble Yaoche Adonu spoke for to join you. Today's presentation uh, was done by uh, the 87-year group uh, president, uh, Mr. Adonu. Uh, we came and presented a set of computers, a lot of computers to our alma mater. Uh, and, and these laptops were presented uh, to the headmistress and the board of directors. Uh, it's the 87 year group in conjunction with the Volta development, uh, Community Development, uh, an NGO based in the US, that have done uh, the presentations today. And it's, it's all uh, in aid of um, ITC. Uh, learning skills uh, this is just to aid it, the students to be able to do their assignments research work and uh, what have you uh, pretty much we have presented the items to dr alfori and who is the headmistress of the school uh, and the board of uh, directors at the school all right uh, so um after that let me welcome <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you, yeah, congratulations to the, the people. To the true student, yeah, yeah the 87 and 88 yeah, year group of was. That they, yeah, you've done yeah. there. But let's, let's talk about uh, Jackie. Uh, she's been talking about um, her new song, Scar. Mm -hmm. I spoke. Oh, to that's her. a beautiful oh, song. Oh, you love the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you want to know the inspiration behind the song? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead, Jackie. Right, so you see the part where I was asking where do you draw the line? And then when I said running around with a scar on my leg, who's going to help? Everybody that's outside looking all happy, everybody, most of us have scars. Most of, most of us have things that we're going through that people don't see it. You know, when you're, when you're running, you are progressing. You see people progressing, but when they go behind the doors, there's so many scars that they have to deal with. So it's more like you telling people outside that, I'm breaking down. Are you not seeing or you're not seeing because of how lively I look on the outside? So it, it, it reflects on both relationship and then everybody's personal life as that. And when I ask where do you draw the line, I'm asking people where their limits are in friendship, relationships, family. Where do you put a break and say, I'm not going to deal with this person anymore? So Scar is a very deep song. And when you listen to JB's rap as well, you get to realize that it's, it's a lot of deep things. Is it coming from like a personal point of view or just, you know, uh, everybody else's point of view? Yes, my point of view, the listener's point of view as well, because every, I do have scars. I'm human. Duh. Yeah, so everybody has scars. We're all dealing with problems that people don't see, but we're still progressing regardless. And, and she sounded just like Rihanna in this song. And you think that they should have a collaboration? They, they have to. Right after baby number two. I'm sure Jackie and Rihanna will have Jackie something. Jackie and yeah. Rihanna will have something. But let's talk but about... But once I tell they should consider me for a, um, like a collab or a remix. Okay. I'll wrap yeah. I'll alongside it. And we move on and talk no, about let's, let's the, move the on. rapper. Yeah, Thank you sure. very much. So let's talk about Sarkodie. Okay. Please stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarkodie, uh, it's uh, going... Well, he, he's going on a high school tour, so uh, it says that uh, Take a Stand Now tour that he's doing, going around... Uh, all the high schools uh, to educate and also inspire them to do more, to take decisions that will help them uh, in the near future. Here is Sankodie at his first school. Yeah. Santoa Girls is his first stop. We're looking forward to the next stop. We'll be following this particular 
tour really closely. It will bring you every detail that you need to know. But uh, let's talk about Prime Movie Box this evening when a father and daughter learn that they... So this is what you're... Uh, well, I'm actually recommending that for you. It's a series and also a snaker. Well, if you have never seen him in any of the series before, this is for you. Comes out on. All right, then. Okay. That'll be all for, for sure, 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 sure. Yes, and, uh, and that will be all for the uh, Joy News Prime. There's more on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo. Brace to enjoy your weekend, your evening. Prime business.